Today, women around the world fight for equal rights. But almost 200 years ago, Ernestine Rose laid the foundations for many of the liberties American women enjoy today. Ernestine was born in modern-day Poland in 1810. Her father, a rabbi, taught her to read the Jewish holy text, something that was forbidden for girls at the time. But Ernestine questioned her father's interpretations of these scriptures, much to his disapproval. When Ernestine was just 15, her father gave her inheritance to a man he wanted her to marry. Ernestine did not want to marry the suitor, so she sued her father. After traveling over 60 miles by sled to the courthouse, she won her case and regained control of her inheritance. Now financially independent, Ernestine moved to Berlin, where she enthusiastically joined intellectual circles. Rejecting her upbringing, she decided she was an atheist. She became a supporter of the free thought movement, which encouraged people to give up their religious belief in favor of critical thinking. Ernestine traveled to Paris and then London, where she began to speak publicly on the subject of workers' and women's rights. In England, she married William Rose, drawing up a contract to protect her rights after marriage. In 1836, the couple moved to New York City, where Ernestine spoke out about equality and condemned slavery, a dangerous subject to speak out against at the time. Ernestine befriended other activists, including leading abolitionist Frederick Douglass. A compelling speaker, she was given the nickname Queen of the Platform. But Ernestine did more than lecture. She also collected signatures for a petition demanding married women's property rights and helped organize the first National Women's Rights Convention in 1850. When her health started to fail, Ernestine moved back to England, where she continued to campaign for women's rights, free thought, and racial justice until her death in 1892. Her advocacy continues to reverberate, reminding us of the power of a single voice to create lasting change. What does Ernestine Rose's life reveal about activism in the 1800s? 